Now, another uh, distribution of power within a region is the Middle East. And if you are going to do a diplomatic cable on Saudi Arabia, it might be useful to look at the balance of power within the Middle East to understand why Saudi Arabia is uh, involved in Yemen. Now, for the last you know, 30, 40 years, the US has been the main sponsor of a regional order. What that basically means is the US is providing security to these oil producing countries. Um, it has military bases in these countries. But this US sponsored regional order is weakening because basically America does not want to make such um, expensive investments in the Middle East anymore. It wants to withdraw some of its commitments from the Middle East because basically Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, these wars have been extremely expensive and also the US is less dependent on oil from this region. Now, the US withdrawing commitment to the region means that there is a power vacuum and Russia is trying to fill this power vacuum. As we know, it is providing support for Syria, um, for the Syrian governments. Um, and in exchange, Russia is getting some very important strategic assets, such as access to this port here, which gives it military influence in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, China is also a much bigger economic influence as well. Um, so China is making significant investments in this region uh, through the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and the Belt Road Initiative. Now, one of the really important elements is the rise of Iran. Iran is increasingly becoming a threat. If we look along here, uh, so Iran, Iraq, and Syria are now part of Iran's alliance. These countries here are opposed to Iran. These countries in yellow are basically neutral. But the security framework or the regional order is changing the Middle East because these countries, these oil producing countries, were for decades the regional order. They were the most powerful countries in the region. But Iran, over the last 10, 15 years, has become increasingly strong because it is financing uh, militia groups and rebel groups to fight wars against these uh, governments. Uh, it is also fighting wars on behalf of the Shia populations within these countries. So uh, this is a quote from The Guardian. So overall, conventionally, conventional military balance is still in favor of the US and its allies in the regions. Its allies would be like Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, but the balance of, of effective force is now in Iran's favor because it is financing these groups, uh, these militia groups that are being very successful in countries like Yemen, um, in Iraq. Um, so it is changing the balance of power. Now these countries still are the most powerful, but the balance of power is changing in Iran's favor. Europe's balance of power is quite interesting. Uh, we have studied already some of this, as you know, from 1991 to 2004, the expansion of NATO and the European Union changed the equilibrium. Um, that the advancements of NATO into Russia's geopolitical neighborhood has meant that Russia has become much, much weaker and that there is a power imbalance in Europe. So increased Rust Western power poses a threat to Russian security. Now, even though Russia is much weaker, there is an opportunity now for Russia to address the power imbalance within uh, Europe because the US is less committed to European security. Donald Trump and Barack Obama um, feel that, there are, that the US should not be the world's policeman anymore. It's just too expensive. So Russia sees an opportunity and it is becoming increasingly aggressive to try and win back control and influence over these areas. 
So Europe is militarily weak. There's a lack of military coordination and investments. So Russia aggressively seeks to reclaim its sphere of influence in Eastern Europe. Now just remember, the reason that Russia felt it had to militarily intervene in Ukraine was because Ukraine was having membership talks with the European Union. And if Ukraine joined the European Union and then naturally NATO, the balance of power would be extremely uh, one-sided. It would just be, uh, it would be, it would mean that Russia would be incredibly weak and they could not allow this to happen. So Russia's uh, vulnerability and weakness after 1991 has meant that it needs to be uh, increasingly aggressive to ensure control over these Eastern European countries. And we can see that uh, Russia's, it, it, Russia's uh, military strength is actually quite good. Um, so US troops greatly outnumbered near Russian border. So across the eastern border, Russia has increasingly uh, militarized, while NATO is actually in a quite weak position. And finally, just a visual demonstration of this is that really Russia wants influence over this area to achieve a greater equilibrium and power balance within Europe.